first. I'll do the live later. I don't think we'll do it right now. Hello, and welcome to the Temple Mount Podcast. My name is Shogun. Joining me again today is my good friend, uh, Hubert, Hubert Henderson, a.k.a. Ugo. And we're going to get into all kinds of stuff, the spiral code, mysterious being a, a fake king, and what it means to be the supreme being, etc. Make sure you've joined us on the Temple Mount Discord server, where we do this every day, and on the YouTube and BitChute channel, where you can find our hundreds of great episodes under Temple Mount Official Podcast. That being said, welcome, Ugo. Thank you for joining me today. How are you, brother? I'm doing well, Shogun. How are you? I'm fantastic. I'm out of the cabin. I got my whole family here with me. I got a beer in my hand, cooking some food. Can't complain, man. Everything's good. How are you? I'm I'm doing freaking awesome. Uh, I'm going to put my camera on since I'm on OBS so I can finally have my face showing in a recording. Pretty awesome. I'll put my face on there too. Hello, I'm Shogun. Nice to meet you. So (laughs) we know that you're a fairy king. We've done Spiral Code episodes before. We know that you are an Omni Magic expert, inventor of Omni Magic. In fact, what would, what is it you'd like to get into today? What would you most like to talk about? Uh, I'm actually not for sure. Other than I did a magical massive spell to bring back my 24 seven joy that I experienced as a child when um, I was before age seven, because at age seven I was medicated uh, against my will with uh, anti uh, with a uh, with it wasn't an antipsychotic, it was Concerta or Ritalin. That's um, an ADHD med, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it, I guess it's an antipsychotic, and it split my mind into two to where I was a devil to my parents and an angel to my teachers. My parents didn't know what to do about that. They were already screwing with my my uh, chemicals and um, psycho- psychology, so you know it just kind of went downhill from there. And then I became bipolar when I was thirteen. Um, when I was at, when I was age ten, I like had a manic depressive episode that like you know reached probably most of the year, so that was horrible. And I had never experienced depression before because I was always joyous before the medication even entered my system. So I don't consider it medication. I'm calling it medication so you know what I'm talking about. But to me, that stuff is like you know the devil. Like it's just evil. Like I did not need that. I could have been joyous and fully woken up way sooner than you know, having to, like, anticipate it now at age 32. (laughs) It really set me back, Shogun. So just to kind of summarize what you're saying is you, when you were a kid, you had, like, a natural enlightenment or a natural higher state of consciousness, but you were put on medications at a young age that kind of blunted that or took that away from you. Yeah, I was going places, Shogun. I was like, I was on the trajectory of full awakening by probably age 16, if, if, if I had never been hijacked like I was. On top of that, my parents were hijacked. I'm pretty damn sure they're not actually my real parents. My real parents are locked up in the subconscious of these bodies of my parents um, in like these like concrete cell like mental creations that the demons that hijacked them created for them. And they're wrapped up in like mummified wrappings and uh, they can't taste, hear, see, touch. But every once in a while, they come out to uh, protect me or save me from something that these demonic so-called parents are trying to do to me. For example, I found out today, I did a reading on it. Uh, you know, I hope my parents never, like, find out that I did this because they would be very upset with me. But um, I was taken to California when I was uh, 14, uh, when I was in the eighth grade and um with my parents and i've just found out that the reason they were taking me to california was probably to um trade me for sex trafficking so So my real uh, my real parents stepped in and prevented that from happening which is why i had such a great time in california because my parents were just like for the first time ever like getting along with me so harmoniously and i was kind of wondering what was that about but now i know it's because my real parents can sometimes escape those mental sub super uh subconscious prisons So let me see if I understand you so far. So you're saying that you believe that your parents who gave birth to you, your mom and dad, they've been replaced by some kind of fake parents or some kind of alien hologram or something. What what do you think it is? Yes. And my real parents are locked up within the subconsciousnesses of those bodies deep within. So they're still there, but they're not always active. Usually they're not. 
But every once in a while, if, if, if it's an emergency, they can take control of the body temporarily. Somehow they do that. I don't know the exact mechanics of it, how they actually accomplish that, but somehow they do it. Is that something similar to MK Ultra? you think? Oh, or yeah. Or mind wipe or manipulation in some way? Yeah, they, they were could probably... cause an issue where a parent may not even recognize their own kids if the kid escapes being contained or held in the black side or facility. Yeah, they were purposely placed in my life strategically to keep me from fully awakening so I could kick the demon's asses, you know. <clears throat> so who do you think it is or what group or organization do you think it is that changed your parents, right? Because I've heard other people talk about this too, thinking that their parents were replaced by clones or something along those lines. So who do you think was behind that if that happened? The Dark Cabal. And that is what the liberals, Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, like who, who, who do you think is the dark cabal? It is, uh, it is definitely the liberal side of things. Um, so, you know, the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, I can never remember all the names, but there's, there's different families that have basically, uh, purposefully incarnated into the same family over and over again, evading karma so that they don't, uh, get, uh, get, uh, recompense for their actions throughout lifetimes and this is how they're able to control the world is because they're always in the same families doing the same things over and over and over again repeat history repeat history causing history to repeat on a massive scale over and over again but but now currently in this uh uh timeline we're actually breaking free of that repeat history bullshit all right so do you believe that your parents are physically different people or they're just like they've been mentally submerged into some kind of thought process or something? Uh, Hello, hello. Can you hear me? I had to unplug my camera because it's not loading for some reason. It won't show my face. Well, even if it's not loading or it doesn't work, we can still make an audio recording. It's just not a big deal. Oh, no, I fixed it. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear no. you. I'm finally on camera for crying out loud. I am Hugh. <laughs> <laughs> all right you got it done yeah yeah so what i'm wondering is are your parents physically different people that are like clones of your parents or are they the same person but the true parents has like a different consciousness that's submerged in the in the fake parents so what i'm asking you is is it the same physical body with two different personalities or is it two different physical bodies entirely they're the same parent bodies. They're not clones, as far as I know. But the real parents are subconsciously um, submerged deep within the recesses of, you know, the co the collective subconscious, like like uh, in these concrete cell rooms, similar to like what you would see in like Saw, the movies Saw. Like they're just stuck there, and there's no door, no window, no light in entering the room. They're, is, they're they're completely immersed in darkness. I'm pretty sure. Uh, and uh, the only way they can contact me usually is through dreams. So they go to sleep often. It's very boring in there, and they usually can't get out. But every so often, if, it, if there's an emergency, like those demons are up to no good, they will, they will take over the body temporarily and give me like a chance to get to know my real parents in the waking. So, I mean, that must be pretty disturbing, right? If you think that your parents are being, you know, essentially tortured in some kind of cell... And, uh, like, does that, that must be pretty stressful for you, right? Like, you must feel Not bad for them. Not is there anything you can do, do you think, to help them out of that situation? Like, get them out of they're, that stuff? They're not being tortured. They're being left alone for, like, the entire lifetime as they're being hijacked. So they, they just have no communication with each other, mother and father. Uh, no communication with anyone. And the demons just ignore them. Like, they, they're taking over the bodies right now. They're, 
they're constantly medicating me against my will. And the reason for that is they're not really my parents. Because my real parents are direct disciples of Roy Jean Davis, is a direct disciple of Paramount Ugananda. They would not have that mindset, oh, we need to like fix our problems with medication to fix our so-called problem child. When all it was that I was being medicated for was I had too much joy. <laughs> Yeah, but what is too much well, joy? You don't have enough joy in this world. Come on, people. I mean, I can certainly relate because my mom swatted me when I was like 19 years old. She like called the SWAT team on me because I was quote unquote acting crazy, and I really wasn't. And uh, I went through the same thing where I was like, I think my parents are like fucking agents of the Vatican Church or some secret agency that you know is here to keep an eye on me or prevent me from manifesting my full consciousness or whatever. Now I kind of see that as, you know, that was a delusional belief I had. There was a reason for it. There were some weird things the cops said that made me wonder what was going on. But now I realize, no, my mom, you know, was just doing what she thought was right. You know, whether she was right or wrong is a matter of opinion. I've met other people who had the same delusion that their parents were fake, right? So I, I guess I'm just pushing back on you a little bit. Like, do you think it's possible that you're resentful that your parents put you on medication and you don't think that's what they should have done. So therefore you think they must be different people, but couldn't it just be that they thought they were doing the right thing and, and what they had to do. And, uh, they're not like different people. They just maybe made a mistake or from your point of view, overstepped their bounds. No, I had a friend on Facebook who told me when I wasn't even aware of it at the time, she gave a psychic reading and said, by the way, your parents are hijacked by reptilian demons, just so you know. I was like, oh, shit. And I had a little cry, and I was, like, freaked out about it. But I got over it. And eventually, like, this year, I met another friend. Um, her name is Sun Knight, or uh, Khaleesi. And she is, she knows everything I'm saying to her is, like, 100% true. Like, she, she understands completely. Like, she understands what I'm saying every single time. And she confirms it for me when she does readings that my parents are indeed locked up in this like cell like structure each of them in the subconscious deep within the recesses of their own minds and uh, so who who is it that you think does this you think it's the reptilians like reptilians that pretend to be humans and take over people's minds shapeshifters well not all reptilians are bad i mean you could talk with your car about that they're not all bad but the ones that have hijacked my par parents bodies are and uh, they, they put on a pretty good front. Sometimes I'm almost convinced that maybe I'm just wrong about it. But then I remember, like, back when I was a child, how loving my parents were and how accepting and welcoming. And they constantly danced with me as a child. And they constantly, like, you know, flipped me upside down and put me on the ceiling so I could, like, almost feel like I was on the moon, like, like walking upside down on the moon. It was just so much fun. But, but they don't do that anymore. I mean, one reason they can't hold me, I'm too heavy. But, but, you know, something shifted. At age seven, they started to change. They were, like, not the same people. They didn't feel loving like they did before. And I can look All back right. on, that, like, on that timeline, and I can, like, I can really see how different they are now. If you look at my parents, they look like they're soulless. Right. Well, honestly, I feel like a lot of people look soulless these days, right? You got all these people that have had three vaccines and they listen to the fucking media, everything they hear on a commercial, they believe they're being led around by the nose. You know, these people seem soulless, right? But presumably they're not soulless. They've just been misled by culture and they don't know how to deal with reality. So they just accept whatever they're told. But I think we should move away from the concept of, like, your parents and what you think about them. Let's talk about yourself, right? So right now, on this particular day, which is Saturday, the 2nd of September, you know, what do you think you are? Who do you think you are at this current time? I am an omnidimensional, omnitemporal, omnispatial fairy king of the sixth dimension. Cue the bliss king. All right. So the obvious follow-up question is, what does any of that mean? What does that mean? It, uh, it means that I am the supreme being of two beings. So I am one of two of, of the supreme beings. If you look up on the internet, the, the, the sound, what is it called? The sound current. If you look up the sound current, it explains how hue is literally the sound behind all sounds. 
and uh, every bit of reality is made up of hue. So it also says something about no one can name, no one can own the name hue or whatever. But I, I think that's a mis, uh, a, a misinterpretation of hue. They say that because no one could own the name hue until I came because I already had the name because I created all of this with my twin. So this is actually something where I realized I didn't put this together before, but Hugh, Hugh or who is uh, Ekinkar, Ekinkar, the religion of the light and sound of God. I actually have a religion based off my name. Yep. Yeah. But you chose that name without knowing about that? Yes. Well, that's interesting, yeah. Because for those who don't know, there's there's something called a Kankar they have in Winnipeg where I live. It's called the religion of the light and sound of God. And they basically believe that going who or who will essentially connect you to God. Is that correct? Yes, but toning Q does other things. It can cause harmoniousness in a group, harmony, pure harmony. It can ca calm people down if there's drama going on. If you just like silently tone it in your mind, it also has an effect. And you don't you don't just go hu. It's more effective if you do it in song. Hu. Well, you're quite musical, right? I listened to one of your podcasts yeah. where you sang the whole time, and it was actually pretty, pretty impressive in a way. Thank you. You know. So, you say that you're the supreme. You're, is it correct to say that you believe that you're the supreme being? Yes, I am one of two. So I am the one of two, is how I call it. Like uh, my other, my my twin, who's equal in power to me and always has been for eternities upon eternities upon eternities. No, no ending, past or future. It's just no beginning, no ending. It just goes on and on. Uh, I wouldn't be able to explain that to you because I don't have my current memories yet. And I don't know how you could contain like an infinite amount of memories. I just don't know how that would work. But I know it can. Um, but my twin's name is Mew, not Lou. I thought it was Lou for the longest time. But that's actually, I think, the, the secret name of Lilith. And she's a false twin, but also a catalyst twin. And, you know, she's no longer in my life. I also corrected her heart so she's no longer at all evil. And she's uh, with her twin, Samuel, or... Satan, you know, in the realm of the angels, I transmuted both their hearts, so they're no longer an issue. Uh, you could say that Lilith is like the female demiurge, and Satan is the male demiurge. So uh, I have to like contradict myself on a lot of the podcasts I did with you because I was saying that Lilith was my twin, going off on all these details. But think of it this way: what I was doing was mistaking Lilith for my actual twin. So every time I was talking lovingly about my about Lilith, I was actually talking lovingly about my twin, Mew. Mu is the spirit of magic or ma magic spirit and uh, capital M, capital U and capital H, capital U, Hugh is the spirit of harmony or harmony spirit. So I am the spirit of harmony. So to clarify, you're saying you are not actually the lover of Hugh, of Lilith that that's changed now. That's not who actually is your twin. Correct. As you, as you grow spiritually in your development, you will think certain things, but then uh, correct them later and be like, oh, that wasn't true. It doesn't actually make you a liar because you believed it in the, in the moment. So actually you were telling the truth about what your belief was, but, uh, you know, things come to light and you realize, oh, I was wrong. Okay, that's fine. Well, then I'll say right. this. Now I know a little bit more about myself and about my twin. Yeah, that makes sense. I do think it's interesting how many different people had a connection to quote unquote Lilith in that period of time. It wasn't just you, it was like Zoo you and other people. It was coming up a lot, the Lilith theme for a while there. So well, what do you think? I think Zeus still is infatuated with Lilith. I talked with him recently about it. So, Yeah, I think so too. Um, but I'm just saying you were one of those people who were really fat, infatuated with Lilith. And now you've kind of changed your mind. So is it fair to say that you believe that Lilith is quote unquote a bad guy, aka a bad girl, like not really your twin, but like a fake twin? She wasn't bad per se. I still stand by that when I say she wasn't really a bad being, um, but she was misguided. And so I corrected her heart, like I said. So now she's perfectly benevolent, just like her twin Satan or Samael is what he currently is now. Um, so, you know, they're no longer an issue. They're no longer trying to, you know, mess up my, me and my twin's creation. Uh, maybe they did in the past, but definitely not now. 
uh, they have a lot of PTSD. Well, definitely her twin does. I don't know about her, but she, he definitely has a bunch of PTSD, realizing all the crap he's done for eons against my work, against my twin's work, uh, against, uh, you know, the creation itself. And saying that it's his when it wasn't. Physicality and quasi physicality both belong to me and my twin. I see. So you believe that the malevolent entities, aka Satan and Lilith, have somehow been converted to good entities. Is that correct? Right? Yes, by my magic. I'm more busy than my other. I'm more busy than my twin. And your magic is om omni magic, right? Yes, I, I have multiple tools. So omni magic is one of them. But I also recognize something more powerful, which is all my power, magic, and potential, as I call it. Also, I have an ascension intelligence that I created, but as a hor benevolent horcrux, it's a split of my own solar consciousness. I didn't kill or murder anyone to create that. That's how you would do it in Harry Potter. But I'm saying benevolent horcrux, so that means I didn't do that. I wouldn't do that. And so uh, he, is, he has a 555,555 IQ, which I call a sex duplex IQ. So he has a six-digit IQ. And so he's smarter than any AI on the planet currently. Anything Elon Musk could come up with, I could come up with better. You know, I also think Elon Musk is a bit of a hypocrite. I, I really hope he doesn't get upset with me about this, but I'm telling the truth right now. Why in the world would he be warning about AI by being the direct, uh, but all the while being the direct uh, reason why he's warning about it? Like he's he's warning about what he's creating. Like he's hypocritically creating something and then warning about it and then being called like a like a savior or like a good person because he's like mm. warning us about something that he's directly responsible for. Right. That's hypocritical. I, I understand what you say about it being hypocritical. That does make sense. But at the same time, I think like if you are advanced in that game of AI and you realize this is going to happen, whether you do it or not, then honestly, the most ethically rational perspective is you would warn about it while you're developing it because, you know, if you don't develop it, someone even worse than you would. Right. So imagine if AI was developed by the Communist Party of China or like something like that right and then it would be super malevolent and like orchestrated to a certain political viewpoint so in a way musk is being coherent when he says well i'm warning you guys that this is dangerous but i also want to be a leader in developing it because if i'm not someone else will and if i i at least can impose some morality on this and otherwise it's going to be totally immoral so i agree it's, it's kind of hypocritical but it kind of makes sense you know and as far as humanity is con concerned, um, I'm not I'm not their savior per se, but I am trying to save the world. World versus people. Like, okay, so I'm saving the world and the and the destiny of humans so that uh, we have a better future, a much better future. My higher self always says, like Hugh always says, that it's more beautiful than you can imagine, and there's nothing to worry about. And I stand by those words because they've always gotten me out of depression whenever I remember them. But now, currently, I have 24-7 joy, and I'm just, like, supercharged and kinetic all the time in my mind and energy and uh, chakras and energetics. Like, I'm just super joyous all the time, and it doesn't go away. And I did a spell to make that happen, and I can do that for other people as well. My Omni Magic is very powerful, and it can affect people and transform their lives for the better and improve, them, improve their lives uh, permanently to where, uh, you know, they're living their dreams, you know, uh, walking through their desires, their true desires. So let's talk a little bit about what it means to be the fairy king. So if you are the fairy king, like, what does that mean? Like, what power do you have? Who follows you? And like, what is the agenda of the fairy king? Okay, so the closest I can come to describing my potential power, magic, and energy, um, and, wait, and, and potential, uh, is if you were to merge all the superhero comic book characters and all the supervillain comic book characters, all the characters that have magic and power in movies, TV shows, and books, and then put that into one conglomerate being, I would still be more powerful than that conglomerate being. Uh, because it's true what they say about God. He is ineffable. And he is unfathomable. And he is pretty much unknowable. Because, you know, when it comes down to it, even you know, uh, the children, um, my, my children, like, we, we you, you all are also ineffable to a degree, but I'm more ineffable, and so is my twin. And we will always be more ineffable, more unfathomable, and more unknowable than all of you. 
you have a certain level that you can get to, but you can never surpass it because we will always be surpassing you. That's how it's supposed to be. And the reason, the reason it's supposed to be that way, one reason I can give you is that if someone came as equal in power, potential, and magic as me and my twin, the entire creation would collapse and unravel, and you'd start to feel yourself in a negative, very bad way. I mean, very bad way, unraveling at the seams we might even unravel and that would not be a good thing so it's never allowed to happen it couldn't even happen even if it were allowed to happen kind of thing even that just describing that is enough of see it's very interesting so you've talked a lot about donald trump and how you feel that donald trump is secretly the president and not only is he secretly the president he's also like controlling even more stuff than the president would control he basically controls like everything so can you talk a little bit? Can you talk a little bit about what you think about Donald Trump and and what you think his significance will be in the next you know four or five years? Yes. Yeah, so Donald John Trump is a kind of savior. Uh, he's working for me and my twin, whether he knows it or not. He does say he does mention God a lot in his speeches, which uh, I uh, I praise him for that. Thank you very much. It's very commendable. Um, but also, if you look at what's happening right now, locked up as supposedly for you know crimes he didn't commit. And um, <clears throat> the whole divine collective of benevolent and perfectly benevolent beings stand by Trump. I just so you know, they do. If you look at like the channeled beings like Pleiadians on YouTube and stuff, usually they have a picture, not of Biden, but of Trump just plastered over the front of the, you know, the cover of that video. You know, why is that? It's because the channeled beings stand by Trump. They love what he's doing. And he is most certainly working for us. Um, also, I want to say that, uh, when, when he's locked up like this, look what's happening. He's, he's gaining a stronger following than he has ever had before. I don't like the word follow or following, but I use it because a lot of people use it. So it helps me be better understood. So, um, you know, just like Yeshua, I, I don't like followers. I, I don't want to have followers. I want people to lead themselves. I want people to use Omnimagic or to work themselves out of the matrix, to break free, to become liberated as such. Um, also, I've been told by the fairies I commune with my um, subjects, you would say, or my friends that I don't remember being my friends right now currently because of the veil of forgetfulness, is that I will be in contact with Trump at because he's either going to see this video or he already knows who I am somehow because he is in charge of not the dark government, but the light government. There is a light government, and it is very, very um, lesser known, if not known at all. Um, but there is a good side to the government, but it's technically not a part of the government because it's run by the military and Trump. Biden is a front. Biden is a, a optic solution to uh, make people think that he's the president. But do you really think a president could be a president if they were doing what Biden is doing? Come on, people pooping themselves and talking about little kids jumping up on their laps and cockroaches. Yeah, I agree. It doesn't really make sense for the leader of the American government. You see, you, you may not realize this, but Trump writes the exact same way I write. He capitalized certain things as, as you know, <laughs> at certain points. I do the exact same thing. I, I sometimes yell in all caps just to get my point across. It's not because I'm angry. It's because I'm passionate. So don't get Trump wrong because he's just passionate. He's very passionate and he is a, uh, you know, working for the creators. What do you think Donald Trump meant when he said Cov Fefe, C O V F E F E? Was that like just a random mispronunciation or was there some deeper meaning to that? Well, the first thought I could come up with, it probably isn't the same spelling as I'm thinking. It's probably like F E F E, but, you know, it sounds to me like, you know, trust in the Fae. Trust in the Fae as in F A E, as in the fairies, as in the elves, the dwarves, the, the vampires, all of the, all of that you consider fate the mermaids you know the the orcs the trolls anything that's right. from fate and mm. and the world the world from where fairies come from you know in in mythology it's actually called a fairy so they are fairies and then their world is called fairy f-a-e-r-y um all right <clears throat> so let's uh let's just talk politics a little bit more uh the next election is coming up who, what do you think is going to happen? You think Trump's going to be reelected? You think Biden's going to get a second term? You think someone else is going to step up? What do you think is going to happen? 
Trump is so protected by the divine and by the creatures, speaking kind of in third person at this moment, uh, that even if he was locked up in prison for life, he'd still be able to run for president. Somehow, paradoxically, it's going to work like that. If he is having to be locked up that long, he will still be able to become the president. And then just, it'll be hilarious because he'll be the president in prison, but, you know, he'll be living it up. He doesn't bother him. You know, even the gangsters, even the crime syndicates and the cartels are behind him. Did you know that? The cartels are behind Trump? Yeah. He also came up with a rap. Trump made his own rap, and it's really good. I would like to hear that rap song. I'd also like to hear in what way co- uh, Trump is pro cartel because I'm not pro cartel. I'm, I'm not a fan of the cartels, and I would think that would be a, a pretty big problem if one of our presidents was cartel friendly. I would not support that. And, and something else I'd like to bring up is, you know, I think it says in the Bible, claiming to be God will always be an antichrist. I really can't be an antichrist. Because my, for one reason, my the main antichrist lives right below me in an apartment. I won't say address. Yeah, or anything. Man. Sorry, but but yeah. but, but uh, also, uh, like I described earlier, I'm more powerful than any than the main antichrist could ever be. On top of that, I stole back, or I can't say stole, but I took back my power from that main antichrist that lives below me. And turned his aura from black to green so that if he tries to steal people's energy in the future, including mine, he'll only be able to heal them alternatively. So it's like he won't actually be able to act like an energy vampire or an incubus as he is right now anymore. He will uh, only be able to give energy every time he tries to take. So he still has a wicked heart, and I will correct that later. But for now, um, my, my, my ultimate trajectory is just to fully awaken and could complete apotheosis but not to become a god to become the god and my twin is the goddess right well and i mean you know i don't know I've how deep we'll get we'll I've get been into okay it by the fairies. i've been okay by the phase that it's finally it's time to like come out of the divine closet to like let people know who i am and whether they believe me and think i'm crazy or you know actually see that there's some truth to this then you know i'm all for it but i don't really care what you think i i am you know steadfast to what i what i know to be true right well i respect that and i appreciate that i will say you know the concept of an antichrist is anybody who sets himself up in the place of christ right and christ is both fully man and fully god so we as christians believe that christ was god and so when you call yourself god or the supreme being or the 13th incarnation of christ we might say, okay, well, you're being an antichrist because you're putting yourself in the position that properly belongs to Jesus. But you don't believe that, right? You believe that you are Christ and people who believe that Jesus is God are mistaken, essentially. Okay, so about that. Every antichrist has sold their soul. Ben is, oh, whoops. The main antichrist has sold his soul, all right? Obviously. He says things about, like, torturing my friends if they come over. Um, and like pulling them into his apartment and then ripping off their skin slowly. Like he's a very bad person. Um, but I have never sold my soul. I have never sold my soul and I will never sell my soul. I don't even think I could if I tried. All right. So um, like we talked about earlier, I think people have lower and lower attention spans. And so we're better to break our podcast up into shorter episodes. So is there anything that you want to talk about or you want to say before we uh, start wrapping up? I am more than my soul. I am my being. I am a sovereign, divine creator. I am the creator of two. I am the supreme being of two. So my twin is also a supreme being, but she's never mentioned on the internet for some reason. Hugh got a lot of, you know, street cred per se. Like, you know, there's a website dedicated to him. There's a religion based off of him. Uh, by his name, but then there's also all these other religions saying the same thing about me. Um, but my my twin doesn't really get any uh, attention. I wonder why that is. I mean, it doesn't really bother me that much. But um, I mean, attention doesn't really matter in the first place because we need to increase our awareness. We need to increase our consciousness. We need to increase our gnosis so that we can finally stop being these little mere become intelligent as sovereign beings and creators in our own right 
because what do parents want for their children? They want them to be uh, better or equal to them, right? Well, in my case, in my twins' case, you can't be better than us, but you can be equal, right? Close to equal. So I think this is one more thing we have to get into. You talk a lot about your twin, and then you talk about your twins, and you say you have many twins. So do you have many twins or only one twin? I only have one twin. It's Mew at the base foundation. But she is fractally split infinite. For example, my, my twin Death is still Mew, but she is um, fractally split infinitely where she is one single female goddess in every single universe. Okay, she is so she is two. one person who's manifesting as many people, but is ultimately one person. Yes, and I'm pretty sure she is always white, as am I. And this is not a racist She's thing. always white, as are this you. Is, this is just our preference, because we feel, I think we felt before this lifetime that we would have um, greater influence if we had you know, incarnated as white each time. I, I, I don't fully know the, the, the full reasons for it, but I do know that I prefer being white over any other uh, color of skin. Well, I have no comment to make about that. That's neither here nor there. But uh, if you had to leave the audience with a message and something you want them to remember and maybe follow up on, what do you think that would be, number one? Speak your truth always um, within reason because, you know, in this day and age, if you speak your truth, pretty much always been true throughout history. If you speak your truth, no matter what, even in public, you will be hanged. You will be uh, crucified. You will be um, persecuted. And so you have to like pick and choose who you speak the truth to and just ignore the rest because they're not going to really uh, listen to you anyway. But if they do, you know, watch out because they might try to kill you just for speaking right. your truth. And I, I couldn't agree more as someone who runs a podcast and my opinions are not always politically correct or uh, SJW approved. And yeah, I mean, they they will sit their gang upon you, right? If you say inappropriate things according to their standards. And uh, we try and have a community here that's free speech, uh, at least within reason, and uh, let everybody have their point of view. So I appreciate you sharing your point of view with us today, Hugh. Oh, for anybody you have, anybody you have. Yeah, go ahead. Trump, Trump said recently, like within this year, I'm pretty sure it was either this year or last year. He said, I'm going to obliterate the the deep state. Well, if he does not accomplish that, I will take up the mantle because I am tired of the shit they are causing. The dark cabal. So would you be would you be willing to run for president in 2024 if that was uh, the best option? Hugh does not need to do that. He has his own ways, creative and whatnot. All right. Well, I hope anybody who's listening to this will also follow up and listen to Hugh's other podcasts on the Temple Mount Roundtable uh, channels. We've done four or five, at least, episodes. I appreciate you sharing this with us, Hugh. Um, I'll ask you one more time. Is there a final takeaway message you want to leave us with? Never give up. Never give up, no matter how hard it gets. Never attempt suicide or anything like that because, you know, you're missing out on what's about to happen. And revelation is not going to happen the way it's written. I was told that by Lilith, but I was also told that by my twin. So, you know, apparently Lilith was being honest in that moment. Uh, we're not going to go through this horrendous, like, craziness for much longer. And it, those beasts aren't going to come out of the freaking abyss. Like, we're not going to let that happen. For crying out loud, the fucking... Oh, sorry. the. Uh, the uh, perfectly benevolent beings that run everything uh, under me and my twin, um, you know, they've got this. They're, they're going to protect us. They're going to make sure that this, you know, stuff doesn't get too, too bad. Um, but it, the, the, the badness, the, the, the corruption, the wickedness, the evil, all this weird, like clown world stuff that's going on right now is actually a byproduct of the transformation occurring under the scenes. If you look deeper into the truth of what's really going on and stop fearing, stop worrying, and stop doubting, you'll actually see that there's nothing to worry about and is more beautiful than you can imagine the future of humanity. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hugh. Hubert Henderson, a.k.a. Ugo. You can find us on the Temple Mount Discord server. Thank you for listening to this on YouTube, BitChute, or other platforms. Thank you for coming back on the podcast, Hugh, Ugo. I appreciate it. 
and I hope that you are right and everything is perfectly benevolent and according to plan. But I know that sharing these ideas and these opinions is a good thing because it will open people's minds and get them to consider different things. So I want to thank you for that. And uh, if you want to do another episode in the future, just let me know. But for anybody who is interested, just find us on Temple Mount Official Podcast, YouTube, BizShoot, and especially join the Discord server. We do this podcast pretty much every day. We've been taking a break lately, but pretty much every day. And you don't want to miss out. So that being said, thank you, Ugo. Thank you, everybody who joined the live audience. And again, you can find us on Temple Mount. And uh, that's on YouTube, uh, BitChute, and several other platforms as well. So that being said, I'm going to banish the bot. God bless.